Mogut stands for Motion Graphics Template. It's a template you can use in Premiere Pro to change text, font, color, and other attributes. Depending on what the template allows, this makes it easy to reuse the same template for multiple projects, speeding up your workflow. The great thing is, you can create these templates in After Effects. I've decided to start a new series where we'll create templates in After Effects and export them as MoGuts for Premiere Pro. If you're new to After Effects, you might not know that it already comes with hundreds of presets. In this video and many more to come, we'll gradually convert all of them into MoGuts for Premiere Pro and make them freely available. More on that later. Without further ado, let's jump into After Effects and start making some MoGuts. Let's start a new composition. If you're new to After Effects, you can see under Effects, there are already a folder called Preset. If you don't see this tab, just go to a window at the top, then make sure Effects and Presets is checked. Now expand the animation preset. Under Preset, you see more folders. And inside all these folders, there are hundreds of presets. Let's click into a couple more folders. And today we'll just convert all the presets in this folder. So to start, let's just type some text on screen. I use the same name as the preset, so it's clearer what it does. We need to make sure the anchor point is in the middle. Press Y to go to the anchor point tool, or go to the anchor point tool at the top. Hold down Control on your PC or Command if you have a Mac. Double left click, then you should see your anchor point move to the center. Then we can align the text in the center of the composition by using the Align tool. If you don't see it on the side, just go to the window at the top again, and it should be the first one. You can also move this tab right under Effects, so it's easier to find. Click Align Center horizontally and vertically to make sure the text is right in the middle. Now we can drag the bungee in presets onto the text layer. As soon as you release your mouse, you'll find some effects being added to the layer, along with some more keyframes. It will take at least another couple of hours to explain what exactly they do, so we won't dwell on that today. You can already see there's an animation being added to our text. There's sliders here you can change as well. The default duration is 1 second, but I can make it quicker, so perhaps just 0.33 second. And I can change the number of bounces it has, and the direction as well. So it's already quite flexible. Next is to take all these adjustable controls to the Essential Graphics panel and turn it into a MoGuts. To open up the Essential Graphics tab, go to the top again and click Window and make sure Essential Graphics is checked. My stick's in here because it was where it was last time I opened it. Yours could be appearing on the site. You can just hold down and drag the tab wherever you want. I prefer it between my effects control and my composition window. So first select the composition. There's only one currently in my project, so just select that one. If you change the name of the composition, it should be reflected here as well. Or better still, remember to name your composition properly when you start it. Once you have selected the right composition, give it a name. It will be the file name when you export it. Click set poster time. This will set your thumbnail in Premiere Pro. Then you can start dragging some customizable elements in this window. Expand your text layer, simply hold down source text in your timeline and drag it to this window. Click edit property and tick all the options. Now you can see a couple more customizable fields. You can change the font, size, etc. When you choose different options, your timeline should reflect that as well. You may come across with issues when you may not have the particular font on your computer or system. Don't worry, it's more of just a warning. As long as you download the font, it should be fine, or choose another font for it. Now to bring other elements into this window, the quickest way to locate them is to open your effects control tab, find the one you would like to bring in, and double click it. Then in your timeline window, drag the control, very important, it's your control, not the effect, to this window. It should inherit your effects name, and copy the value as well. Just like the source text element, when you change the value in this window, it should be reflected in your composition window as well. Click Edit Range to set the min and max value of your controller. Obviously, I don't want this to be between 0 and 100, so I just set the slider to 0 to 10, or actually even 5 is enough. 
Who wants to save 5 seconds of text bouncing anyways? For this mode, we'll just drag the duration, bounces and direction elements. So I'll go to the effects tab and double click each of them and have those drop down menus into my essential graphics panel. You can test different settings and see what you get from them. If you ever want to delete them, just simply highlight the one you want to delete and press backspace or delete. A few moments later, I realized that I haven't brought in the color element. So for now, our text will only show white text on the transparent background. But this is not ideal as a template because you want to be able to change the color of the text for different projects. So to do that, we'll search fill in our effects and then you can drag it onto your text layer or to the effects control tab. Once you've brought it in, you can see the text turn red. It's because it's a default color. You can change it to white, then double click the controller to reveal it in your timeline. Bring it into your essential graphics panel. Usually I have it directly under the text property. You can also change the name to text color or you can just simply leave it as it is. Now you can change the color of your text. To export this template, click export motion graphics template button. It will prompt you to save the project first. Very important, always save your project. Then comes the next window. Set your directory where you would like to save the mogut. Tick all the boxes below. Then in this text box, just type in some keywords that will help you find the mogut quickly. You can use multiple keywords, separate them by a comma and press tab to store them. Finally, press OK. I've made one before without the color element, so I would like to overwrite and replace it. Again, you may get this warning box about font, but don't worry too much about it. You just need to download it or use different fonts. Then just let the computer do its job. And that's it. That's how we create Mogut. I'll speed up of creating all the Moguts in this folder. It's more or less the same process. Quickly, I'll show you how to import and use Moguts in Premiere Pro. So as you can see, I'm on a Mac. The Moguts work across PC and Mac systems. So it's very handy in that sense. Open up your essential graphics on Premiere Pro. It should be under window as well. Then on the browse tab, you can see all the templates available to you. I already have a lot in my library, but for yours, it may be just some Moguts that came with Premiere. To import a Moguts, just open your Finder or File Explorer on a PC, locate your Moguts and drag it into your Essential Graphics window. As I have hundreds of templates already, setting up those keywords earlier is very convenient for me to search any particular template. You can bring this Moguts to your timeline it may take some time to load depending on the size of your file. Again, it will warn you for Adobe fonts, but I usually just ignore it. Now, when you highlight this template in your timeline, on your essential graphics panel under edit tab, you should have all the control you set a while ago. Change font, size, duration, and whatnot. So here you go, have fun and make something unique for each project. It may seem each Moga will just do one simple thing at a time but you use Mogurts with different settings, you end up with different style and different colors, and it's in your total creative control of what you could come up with with just a handful of templates, like this flickering text or spinning in text like this. To wrap up this video, I put all the Mogurts I made for this video on my Gumbrel page, completely free of charge, link down below. My aim is to turn the entire presets in After Effects to Mogurts, so editors can just import them and use them in Premiere. Also, in the future, I'll create some of my customized Mogurts. All of them will be either free or very affordable. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of that. And if you think this video has been helpful, please hit the like button. That's all for today's video. Until next time, happy editing.